second half of chapter 39, The Resurgence of Conservatism, or if you're using the 15th or older edition, chapter 40, a Kennedy, Cohen, and Bailey's The American Pageant Textbook. Once again, I'll start us off. As conservatism rose, so too did the power of religion, showcasing Jerry Falwell's organization, The Moral Majority. This group hated sex, abortion, feminism, and gay rights. These groups sought to turn one's personal opinions into political movements. But Abe, how much success did conservatism had when it made its way to the courts? Well, Reagan had, appointed, had appointed three conservative judges to the Supreme Court, one of whom was Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman on the Supreme Court. Reagan's philosophy, which rejected affirmative action and abortion, was reflected in several court cases. In Martin v. Wilkes, the court made it more difficult to demonstrate that an employer was racially discriminating in hiring. In Webster v. Re Reproductive Health Services, the court partially overturned the pro-abortion decision in Roe v. Wade by approving a law that placed some restrictions on abortion. Finally, in Planned Parenthood v. Casey, the court decided that states could restrict abortion if they didn't put a so-called undue burden on women. All right, Frank, we've talked about the president himself, we've talked about the courts, now what about the Congress? Well, the Democrats regained control of the Senate in 1986 and sought to slow the momentum of the conservatives. The country was suffering economically with a budget and trade deficit. Then, on October 19, 1987, the stock market plunged more than any other single day in history in a date to become known as Black Monday. On the political scene, the Democrats were pressing forward with presidential bids. Gary Hart was the frontrunner until charges of sexual misconduct forced him to drop out, and Jesse Jackson campaigned for the Rainbow Coalition of Minorities. However, these two were outshone by George H.W. Bush, who ran on the same issues which, on which Reagan had won four years earlier, other, otherwise known as low taxes, being tough on crime, and opposition to abortion. These issues were still popular with the majority of the country, and this carried him through to victory on election day. But Abe, can you tell me what George H.W. Bush did upon entering office? George H.W. Bush, the father of an American treasure. True, but we'll get to know later. Bush's strongest commitment was to public service. Even though Democratic protesters were crushed in China, Bush still maintained normal relations with China. Furthermore, during Bush's administration, the communist regimes in many European countries collapsed, such as in Hungary, East Germany, and Czechoslovakia. Under Gorbachev, the Soviet Union dissolved into around 15 republics loosely bound together in what is known as the Commonwealth of Independent States. Russia, with Boris Yeltsin as the leader, was the most powerful republic. Most of the governments rejected communism and welcomed democratic reforms. And now that the Soviet Union was no more, the Cold War was officially over. The, and Bush discussed a new world order in which democracy would reign. Now that the Cold War was over, Americans were unsure about the future of U.S. foreign policy, and some wondered if America would return and retreat back into isolation. The end of the Cold War also affected the economy. Many defense plants were shut down and unemployment skyrocketed. All right, Frank, could you tell me about what was going on in the hotbed of the Middle East? Of course. On August 2nd, 1990, Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein invaded neighboring Kuwait in a bid to capture regional oil supplies. Ironically, Saddam's army was largely equipped with American vehicles and weapons, which America had given to Iraq in an attempt to check the power of Iran. Since the world needed the Middle East oil supply, it demanded Iraq withdraw or it threatened invasion. When Iraq failed to retreat, America, alongside allies, launched Operation Desert Storm, in which several hundred thousand troops smashed their way through Iraq accompanied by aerial bombardment. The operation was successful in that it destroyed Iraq as an aggressor, but the war pulled America ever deeper into Middle Eastern conflict. Aside from foreign policy, what did Bush do on the home front? 
Well, Bush signed the Americans with Disabilities Act, which outlawed discrimination against Americans with disabilities. Bush also challenged affirmative action by questioning the legality of some college scholarships available primarily to racial minorities. Bush continued this war on affirmative action by nominating Clarence Thomas, a critic of affirmative action, for the Supreme Court. Thomas was accused of sexual harassment, but in the end, he became the second, second African American ever to have a seat on the Supreme Court. Furthermore, politics became more gender divided as women were very unsupportive of the anti-abortion Republican platform. Many of these women decided to support the Democrats instead. Overall, under Bush, bad things continued. Unemployment rose to almost 10%. The budget deficit soared and taxes increased by about $133 billion, even though Bush had promised no new taxes. What can you do? Don't forget to check out our website with practice AP questions. And don't forget about Quizlet sets for all those important bold terms. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And comment down below if you have any questions at all. We'll catch you guys next time. time.